While the original Angry Birds was home to many classic stories of pigs stealing eggs, it felt as though there was a hole in the genres it covered. Besides, the game was so successful that it only made sense to follow it up with another. But what would that even look like? Should the original game receive a sequel? Does it need a spin-off with even more levels than before? And just what crazy topics and themes would be added that couldn't just appear in the original game? The answer to all these questions and more can all be simply explained by one simple game. This is the story of Angry Birds Seasons. Hello everybody and welcome back to my series of ranking every Angry Birds game. Last week we covered the original Angry Birds and if you'd like to see the history of its chapters and updates as well as my thoughts on everything the game has to offer then I suggest watching that one first. But who am I kidding? You guys are on top of things and are ready to revisit the next game in our series. There is much less known history about the creation of Angry Birds Seasons but what we do know is that Rovio virtually just wanted to make another Angry Birds game to meet the demand for one. There's concept art of this game being called Angry Birds 2, which feels like it would have been a very different game. On the other hand, when Angry Birds Seasons did find the release, it wasn't called Seasons, it was just called Halloween. It makes sense considering it came out in October of 2010, a year after the original game, and the only level pack at the time was Halloween themed. It's hard to say if they just felt like bundling more holidays into this one title, or if the popularity of the new game caused them to do so. Regardless, this is how the game we know and love came to be. I think the main question we need to answer today is, why does this game exist? Maybe that's a bit too blunt. What I mean is, what does Angry Birds Seasons bring to the table that the original Angry Birds doesn't already have? I have the most recent version of the game on my phone, so that's how I'm able to play it for y'all today. As most of you already know, the majority of the classic Angry Birds games have been removed from the App Store, including this one. Unless you own it originally, you sadly cannot download it ever again. But hey, all my fans in Zimbabwe? Good news guys, you can still freaking download Angry Birds Seasons. I don't know how or why this is a thing, but I couldn't not mention it. The name Seasons is really intriguing to me, especially after playing through all the levels. Last I checked, there are only four seasons, right? There's spring, there's summer, and fall, and who can forget about winter? Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's just four. So how the hell did Rory come up with 27 more? I literally just finished editing the original Angry Birds video, and I now feel that I spent much too long going through each chapter of the game. I still want to go through them all for this game too, but I'm keeping each one to a few sentences at most unless I really need to mention something. That being said, there are 31 seasons to go through, so we should probably get started. The first level pack is now known as Trick or Treat and was the only set of levels when the game was released as Angry Birds Halloween. As this is the first chapter in the game, let's discuss what Angry Birds Seasons is bringing to the table. We do not need to go in depth on the gameplay or birds included because I've already been plenty thorough in the previous video. The game is identical in terms of gameplay and started out with the seven birds in the series at the time, Red, The Blues, Chuck, Matilda, Bomb, Hal, and Terrence. The music, however, varies in each season, meaning we got completely new songs sometimes and really cool themed versions of the classic Angry Birds music we know and love. Enjoy listening to it throughout the video. While there are some nice illustrations reward for beating packs of levels, there really isn't a story to this game, it's all just seasonal fun. Trick or Treat is otherwise as basic of a level pack as they come. I personally love the very early Angry Birds level design, so this is an instant classic, but 45 dang levels can go a little long, I must say. On December 1st, the game rebranded the Seasons and appropriately added the pack Seasons Greetings. Get it? Of course you get it, you greedy little pig! The format of this level acts as an advent calendar, and you can play a new level every day in December until Christmas. That means nowadays you can skip to the last level or any one you want whenever you want, which is cool. Very basic level still, so we move on. The calendars turned to 2011, and since the game launched towards the end of 2010, this is their year to really hit all the big holidays. Hogs and Kisses is up first, our Valentine's theme pack. There were cupids everywhere, pigs falling in love left and right, and just general romance felt throughout each level. <sighs> I love killing pigs in love. Go Green, Get Lucky sounds like a weird sequel to the sex episode, but it's actually just our St. Patrick's Day chapter. The pigs become leprechauns and it's the bird's job to steal all their gold and destroy every four leaf clover. The easter eggs chapter is pretty special as they went all out with 10 golden eggs to find. Easter just makes the most sense for Angry Birds to cover so I feel as though these are some of the more memorable levels in the early life of the game. Then summer rolled around and the pigs decided to throw a picnic. More like a pignic am I right? Wait they already made that joke? Oh man I feel like such a douche. This chapter is also in the advent calendar style and had a whopping 30 levels. Honestly, this theme is pretty boring to me. The only good level is the last one because the reference to the HAL animation I love so very, very dearly. Getting to play a level just like the video is a surreal experience. The Mighty Eagle is added in this update, but who cares, honestly? Definitely not me. Definitely not the guy who refuses to pay money to own the Mighty Eagle or something. 
The Moon Festival is the first real mix-up from the stereotypical season you'd see celebrated in mobile games like this. It's honestly a really great episode, and led to a lot of similar feeling ones down the line that are equally as awesome. October is almost always a spooky level pack, and this year was none other than Hamoween. And if you know anything about the game, then you probably know that our boy Bubbles first made his debut in this very game. It was a really cool step for Angerbird's seasons. Getting new levels was great, but brand new birds really solidified this as a big deal for Angerbird's history. We ended up getting a pretty substantial amount of new characters in this game, and it'll be fun to see how each of them were introduced too. I feel like I talk about inflation way too much when Bubbles shows up, so you know what? Fine, have a picture of Stella inflation again. See, I can change. Look how much I've grown. Almost as much as Stella's grown, almost. You know, all this talk of Halloween and inflation has really gotten me in the mood to order some more body pillows from Anime Dakimakura Pillow. And my package just arrived. I knew I needed a spooky new gotch you have to sleep with, cuddle with, pretty much do anything and everything with, and I even indulged in this cool mystery pack. I had no idea what to expect. These products are really high quality, and little bonuses like the hidden zipper on the pillows is a great addition. I know you're drooling over the thought of owning some of these yourself. I know I am. And the Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales are coming up quick. You're not going to want to miss it, so go to my link in the description and get all the body pillow, anime waifu, and hunky himbo needs fulfilled today. God dang it, I should have got a Mrs. Claus body pillow. Now what the freak am I going to do all winter? <sighs> Guess I'll just have to play through the Wreck the Halls advent calendar in Angerbird Seasons. Wait a second, did you just say the Wreck the Halls advent calendar for Angry Birds Seasons? I love the Wreck the Halls advent calendar for Angry Birds Seasons. Have you ever tried the Wreck the Halls advent calendar from Angry Birds Seasons? Well then, click the link in the description. No, I'm just playing with you. Relax, cuz. Life is supposed to be fun. Christmas levels were as regular as the Halloween updates were, and while I would have preferred to see some Quan's representation, I'll still try to enjoy these levels as best I can. The new year was 2012, and instead of the world ending like in that documentary, we got more Angry Birds Seasons levels and got to live through none other than the Year of the Dragon. I think this might be one of my favorite, if not my favorite seasons in the game. The levels are a ton of fun, the theme looks really cool, and who could all forget the new mighty character, the Mighty Dragon. Seriously, this game just keeps getting better. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any cool inflation art for the Mighty Dragon, so please make someone send it to me pronto, okay? This guy deserves more love, and I would love to see him return to an Angry Birds game someday. And I'd love to see him inflated. Around Valentine's Day, we got the Cherry Blossom update, which is very pretty, but not too interesting otherwise. And then, one of the worst things to ever happen, Angry Birds made water levels! Ah, my nemesis! What kind of season is Piglantis anyways? That's not a season, that's a goddamn location, idiot! I always thought this should have been a level pack for the original game, not seasons, but whatever. Guess I gotta play 30 stupid water levels now. At least the pigs are hot mermaids this time, but man, this game is hard to play one-handed. It was time to go back to school, but at least you could play some new Angry Birds levels to pass the time. And while I've always found this to be a really strange inclusion, Stella made her debut here. Man, why couldn't she be a hot mermaid? Nova Stella fits the back to school theme, I guess. And while I love Stella as a character, her power is really frustrating to use, so this level pack is not great in my opinion. Moving on, they've somehow managed to keep Halloween fresh with the Haunted Hogs update. Classic creepy background paintings aside, these new ghost blocks are a crazy concept. Birds can pass through them, but objects still interact with them, leading to some of the most creative and unique levels I've seen in Angry Birds history. I really enjoyed playing these, and I already missed those ghost blocks. Winter Wonderham on the other hand was as basic of a Christmas pack as they come. I'm not even going to say why, we're just going to move on to 2013. This year was rough for seasons, as they maybe felt they were out of ideas for what seasons could even mean. That's pretty apparent in the two level packs featured, which are also the last levels I chose to unlock here. Anyways, going forward, other than Christmas and Halloween, Angry Birds Seasons is basically no longer a game about featuring any holidays or seasons, so get ready for this to go nuts. Abraka Bacon was their first new idea, and it's a pretty good one, as the circus theme can lead to a lot of new layouts. Additionally, this portal feature was added, which also makes for a lot of new scenarios. I still don't love these levels, but they're alright, I guess. And our winter theme is Arctic Expedition. Couldn't have done Hanukkah instead, could you? Well, your poor decision led to some really boring, icy looking levels, now featuring water, so great job, Angry Birds. 2014 had a lot more levels, but spanning over just three level packs. They've made a location a season once again with South America. I've been to South America, and let me tell you, it looks nothing like this. Still, these were much more enjoyable than the last pack. This update also included the Pig Days episode, featuring somewhat weekly challenges that were themed around smaller holidays. I honestly think that's a pretty perfect idea, as holidays like Left Handers Day don't make sense for a full update. There are a lot of funny and strange levels in this massive pack, so a few of my favorites are William Tell Day, 
World Goth Day. Get my freaking Willow Gwen sandwich in here. And the last level ever added, World Milk Day. Well, I was getting worried. I thought they were going to miss it. In my freshman year of college, I had a lot of very boring and easy classes, so I spent my time much more wisely by 3-starring every level here. A lot of them were nightmares to do so, but I can now say I'm a certified pig day professional. And I bet none of you can say that, can you? Get on, loser! One of the biggest episodes is Ham Dunk, which arguably does work as a seasonal thing. March Madness is pretty big, and I'm surprised they never did a football or baseball theme too. For a good while, I thought it was going insane because I remembered specific levels for each NBA team in the game, and I thought it was really cool that my state's team had its own level. Apparently, near the end of the game's life, the levels were removed, and there was no explanation as to why. I guess their deal with the NBA ended, and the levels are just gone now. They were cool, and all we have now are some kind of basic basketball levels. And who could forget a brand new bird? The Mighty Basketball. Wait, the Mighty Basketball? I hate the Mighty Basketball! It's literally just a damn Spalding ball that bounces around the screen and it pisses me off. F tier. Oh, sorry, force of habit. I say it's time we get a real new bird. It felt fitting for the Finnish-based company Rovio to make a winter theme level focus on their home country. And hey, why not make an awesome new bird to celebrate? It'd be Terrence's cousin, Tony, who's just as strong but can do a ground pound like no other. This guy shows up silver any day. Tony's such a cool character, and while it's fun to have him in seasons only, I wish he reappeared again. He actually is in some more levels in this game, thankfully, so what are we waiting for? 2015 was another fairly small year for the game with three episodes. Tropical Paradise feels like a fairly obvious summer theme, and the added tiki object really make this one shine. Invasion of the Egg Snatcher is probably the farthest from a season that we've seen so far, but I can't help but love an alien-themed set of levels. Ski or Squeal captures that stereotypical 80s ski movie trope that I've seen more parodies of than actual source material for. Still, after the amount of winter levels they've done, I'm impressed with their ability to bring something fun and new to the table. And just like that, we enter our last year of the game, 2016. Hey, on the bright side, this is our largest amount of levels in years. That is a good thing, right? Well, remember how the original Angry Birds got rough around the time the movie released? Well, would you believe me if I showed you these loading screens and app icons they made for the levels in 2016? Oh yeah, get ready for absolute garbage. Barry Hogmother's up first. Alright, I guess they're calling characters Seasons now. Well fine, my favorite season is Stinky Steve then. So instead of talking about these bad levels, let's look at some amazing Stinky Steves made by my Discord member g 4 Bo. He has made so many fun gifts and just fun looks at what Stinky Steve could be like in the game, and it makes me want to see him modded into something so bad. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not, you stupid bastard? Anyways, back to stupid old stinkless seasons, I guess. Somehow Marie Antoinette is the name of our next episode. Marie Antoinette. In what way is a historical figure a season, people? None of these are fun. They are so painful to get through. Each level is only just bushes, and it sucks. F tier. God dang it, I keep forgetting I'm not doing that. Finally, a normal one. Summer camp. The levels aren't great, but I am happy it's based on something seasonal. Anyways, next up is Piggywood Studios. To be fair, a movie-based episode makes a ton of sense, and seeing references to a bunch of classic movies as Angry Birds levels is actually cool. Now, what if we took one movie that was popular in 2016 and used that for the entire theme of our Halloween levels? Nah, that would be crazy. You're actually really dumb for suggesting that. Let's take a TV show that's popular in 2016 and make it the entire theme of our Halloween levels. You know it's bad when the best pun they could come up with was hammier things. And if you still haven't realized, this is a Stranger Things parody. You couldn't tell because the levels have absolutely nothing to do with the show? Oh, come on. That can't be true. That. Okay, you actually might be onto something there. Whatever, it really doesn't matter as we have made it to the final chapter, Ragnarok. I, I mean, Ragnarok. Wait a second, that doesn't even sound any better. It's Viking stuff. Who really cares at this point? At least it feels fitting for the game. Let's look at the very last image we see in Angry Birds Seasons and get to the ranking, shall we? What do I like and dislike about the second game in the Angry Birds series? Well, I understand now why this game deserves to exist beyond the original game, but I want to save that for my closing monologue before revealing its placement on the tier list. I will say, for having double the chapters, it kept my interest nearly all the way through. It really helped to change themes, add mechanics, and keep each episode somewhat short. The cast of characters is great too, and those little bonuses like Tony and the Mighty Dragon stand out compared to the original Angry Birds roster. It was also just fun getting excited for the next holiday to roll around so you could play a new update in this game. I feel like, especially in that first year, getting all the big holidays was a really exciting time and led to a lot of longtime fans attaching themselves to the series. I hope it's clear I was only joking about the weird quote-unquote seasons they started introducing. They were mostly fun, and I understand not everything actually has to be seasoned to work in this game. I think the original Angry Birds set up seasons so it could knock them down, and it did not disappoint. 
but there are always negatives. Some of these packs are too long or too short even. The first half of the game is great, but the 2016 levels have the same problem as late Angbirds had, where each level just has too much stuff going on, and at least it's just cluttered ugly messes. Again, look at an early level, and then look at the holiday levels. It's an insane contrast that proves how keeping things simple isn't a bad thing. Three starring some of those last episodes is like getting an art degree. It's actually not that hard, but man, does it take forever, and is it not worth the trouble? But otherwise, I'd have to say I thoroughly enjoyed revisiting this game. I really didn't give it a chance as a kid, and even as an adult, the amount of levels put me off. But forcing myself to do it for this video reminded me of a lot of great concepts and chapters that I'd completely forgotten. Something I noticed after playing through the first game again is they seemed to run out of ideas for level themes pretty early into the game. I think the last few that worked perfectly fine were Hammam High and Mine and Dine, but even those feel like they could have worked just as well in Angerous Seasons. After that, they added stuff like Flock Favorites, tons and tons of Bird Day levels, and of course, Piggy Farm and Jurassic Pork. Both levels that should have absolutely been in Seasons, but Robo just felt like giving the original some attention. What I'm getting at is, Angerous Seasons feels like the game Rovio wanted to make levels for all along. Each pack of levels had a single theme that originally focused on holidays, but eventually could be anything and everything. The levels in this game feel so much more fun and interesting than the original game, and I'd have to imagine Rovio had an easier time making updates for this game than the other. I guess the more consistent update schedule kind of proves that too. In short, Angry Birds Seasons feels like the perfect solution to the main problem the original Angry Birds had, and somehow the small holiday game spinoff turned out to be the superior Angry Birds experience. S tier. Looks like this is our first change up from the previous tier list I made. I put it in A before, having only remembered that the game was good, but couldn't possibly compare to the original. That's why I'm really glad to be taking my time and playing through these games fully from my updated list. But who knows, maybe you all have yet to be swayed and still consider this A tier or worse. Let me know what you think. This series and all of my other ranking videos would not be possible without the support of my Patreon and YouTube members. Please consider supporting me if you've enjoyed the series and want to see more. Thank you to my current channel members, Groth One Finger, Cobalt Chrome E, Patrick Lyrejean, Hono Maki, Deccan Knight 9000, Bright Streak, MD Switchy, Gall Guy, Daisy, Dolphin Rider H2O, Dojo Master, Pez Dispenser, Omegon, Carl Williams, and Christoph Creations. I got three new members after releasing my last Angry Birds video, which I assume means that you are a fan of the series, and I wanted to give you a special shout out as well. So thank you to Eduardo Santiago, especially because you're in the shut up and take my money tier, so I will shut up, but I sincerely appreciate it. Thank you, Generic Toho fan, and thank you, it's me, Ali. It will be a little while before we get to the next game of the Angry Birds series, which is, of course, Angry Birds Rio. Exciting stuff. I'll see you then. Goodbye. Guys, I woke up early this morning to record this video, and there's snow outside. Today is October 31st, and there's snow outside. God dang it, Angry Birds season does not wreck the halls yet. You can't make it snow. It's Halloween. It's Halloween, Angry Birds season. It's Halloween.